So in the previous video, we've defined water strings and we talked about how to declare them as well as we also said that strings are simply arrays of characters with a null suffix. And in this video, we are going to talk about how can we initialize strings. So basically, there are a couple of ways to do that. And in some of them, there is a critical difference, which we will talk later on in this course. But for now, let us see how we can initialize a simple array of characters. Not a string, but a simple array of characters. So basically, we know how we can initialize a, an array of characters, right? We just specify the type of, the, of this array, the name, square brackets, and then in the curly brackets, we specify each of the elements, each of the characters in this given array. So this array is called char's array, that's its name, and that's not a string, that's just an array of characters with five elements starting from index zero up to index four. So that's okay and everything is great, but how should you initialize a string? Simply saying we just need to add a null character, a backslash zero character to the end of this array. So one of the ways to do so, the first option to do so, would be just like we've done with the characters array. So simply kind of initialize a characters array, right? Char, str, and just used in the curly brackets, the hello uh, letters. And then since it's a string, don't forget to add the null character to the end. And now from this point on, the computer will know that it can treat str as a string, meaning you will be able to use different new operations and functionalities on this given string that basically a lot of these functionalities we are going to learn in this chapter. Okay, so um, in one of the following videos, we are going to talk about different functionalities that we can do with strings and some built in functions, and so on. So just wait, guys, there is a lot of things to cover up in this section. And before we move on, right, this, that was the first option to initialize a string in C. And before we move on, I want us to take a look at another way to initialize a string. So the second way is kind of different from the first way that we used to initialize a string. And, and it involves the usage of double quotes. So for example, we can initialize a string in the second way as follows. We simply write char, which is the type str in a square brackets in very similar to how we initialized an array of characters or the first option to initialize a string. And you can see that visually, it is this initialization is somewhat different from the first option, but behind the scenes, what is actually going on is very similar to the first way. This hello, which is within the double quotes, is also interpreted as a sequence of characters and the null is obviously appended to the end of it because it's a string. Even if you do not see it in the initialization itself, like we use in the second option. So basically the backslash zero is appended to the hello behind the scenes in the second option, like in the first one. So simply saying these two options to initialize a string are pretty much the same. So you can try and initialize these examples on your own using your own IDE, and then try and print out their contents character by character. You already know how to do that, right? So pause the video, initialize your strings, and try to print out the content one character after the other, and basically you know how to do it, just use some while loop and uh, as long as you didn't come to the backslash zero to the null that specifies the end of the string, just print one character at a time. All right, and once you're back, I really hope that you pause the video and try it on your own. Now let's take a look at a couple of other examples. So let's first of all create a string for the first name and initialize it with our first name. So in my case, my first name is Vlad and that's how I create it. So in this way, you initialize your first name string that looks like this in the memory of your computer. Just the letters, the characters V, L, A, D and a suffix of null at the end of the string. And now let's say that you want to initialize your last name. And in my case, that's going to be a really long one. <laughs> my name is Vlad Budnitsky. 
So the way I initialize my last name in C language will be like that. Char, last name of, th of size 10 and my last name, which is Budnitsky. And the last name is set to be of size 10 for a reason. We have the first nine characters which represent my last name. And also we have to hold some space for the additional end of string indicator, the backslash zero, the null character. So I hope that's clear why we have 10 characters instead of just the nine, right? Because we are using strings and we need a space for the last null character. And lastly, let's say that you also want to initialize a string that will hold your password. So that will look something like this, char, password, size 10, and let's say that you're not so, uh, you don't have so sophisticated password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And by the way, I do not recommend you using these types of password because they are easily hacked. So, so now if we take a closer look and look at this password string, it's kind of strange, it's kind of new, right? Because we are using a number as a string and basically saying there is no problem because we can also store a string of digits. Digits also may be represented as characters. So that's okay. And what we've created here is a string with nine characters and the last one uh, is a null character, right? As every string in our C programming language. And we can access any of these digits just by specifying the index itself. And there you go, there you have your password represented as a string. And why do you want to store your password as a string? So one reason for that is because passwords may be, may be just uh, with numbers, but most of the passwords include the combination uh, between letters, right? So A, B, C, and then you go one, two, three, and so on. So it may be a combination of digits and characters and so on. So you want to be able to store it as a string. So this is it for this video. I hope it's clear as to how you should initialize strings now. And just last note, I want you to know is that there is also another way, additional way that we can initialize strings in our C programming language. And that can be done using pointers. And that's also very important to understand because in this additional way, we are going to create the string at a read only memory region. And this way you won't be able to modify this string after it was created. But all of that, it's going to be discussed in the advanced courses and where we are going to see a lot of different topics that also include the usage of strings, pointers, the combination between them, memory allocations and so on. So thank you guys for watching and have a great day.